A little known feature on newer mobile devices, both iOS and Android, is the press and hold icon shortcut menu. This is supported on iPhone 6S and onwards, and it's also supported on my Galaxy S8 Android device, so probably around that vintage for the Android devices too. Now this feature has had a few names over the years, and I believe it's currently referred to as Force Touch on Apple devices. So putting this into action to show you how to start recording a Strava activity fast, I have the Strava icon on screen here, press and hold, and there we go. We have the shortcuts menu. From there, we can start a recording. We can add a manual activity. We can hit search. I can send beta feedback because I'm running the beta version of this app. And there's also some iOS management tools there. So edit home screen and remove app. The most interesting of all of those is the start recording shortcut. Now clicking on that, we'll start recording an activity immediately. So there's no need for me to open Strava, hit the record button and then hit start. This start recording shortcut will start recording a brand new activity of the last type that you have recorded with the Strava mobile app. So if you've used the app to go for a ride, it will start a brand new ride. Same goes for run, yoga, and whatever else Strava support these days too. If you have pre-configured a Bluetooth heart rate monitor in the Strava app, it'll start looking for that and recording that data too. If it can't find it, you'll get all the data, obviously except heart rate. Okay, putting this into action, I'll hit start recording straight to Strava. Now it doesn't go to the record screen, it goes to my home screen, but you can see there the recording is highlighted. We click on that and we are off for a run that I've set this to. And we click on the location there. That's not actually my location. It is possible to fake GPS locations with iOS since I found out today. Uh, that's nowhere near the Llama Lab. So that's one way to do it nice and fast, but there is an even faster way than what I've just shown there. I'll just stop this one, finish, and discard. Okay, so Strava is now closed. This does work with the phone locked as well. Hey, start recording Strava activity. Okay, I started your workout. Job done, easy as that, and super, super fast. So Siri is supported by Strava, and you can do things such as start an activity, which will start, again, a previously recorded activity type that you've recorded on the Strava mobile app. You can pause and you can resume. You can't stop and you can't save with Siri. I'll link to the details below from Strava's website. My use case for the Siri integration would be probably walking or hiking. If I'm out for a coffee walk with my son and we go a few extra blocks, I can just kick in that activity recording and save it when I get home. Because if it's not on Strava, you know what they say. Okay, next up from Strava, last week was an update to the satellite map imagery they use from Mapbox. So pulling up their website here, they say when it comes to exploring maps, satellite imagery is an indispensable tool. You can get a better sense of terrain, check for road shoulders and sidewalks, notably near landmarks, and the list goes on. My use case for using satellite imagery on Strava to plan rides is for the new gravel routes that I'm doing. They're all brand new roads to me, and I need to know whether I'm in the forest, on open plains, or in the middle of a paddock on a road that probably doesn't even exist. That does happen on occasion. So having the latest maps is a good thing. Strava go on to state that the images can only be as helpful as they are recent for the satellite imagery. Of course, that's stating the obvious. And the new updates come thanks to the Mapbox's latest update. Now Mapbox is the base images they use on Strava for the satellite imagery. And digging further into the details, they state here the new satellite images are on average from the last two years or newer. A fun way to find out how recent the images are in your local area, find a new house that's been built in your local area, zoom in and see if it's finished yet. Pulling up these new maps on the screen here, and you can see my location, or my virtual location, right near the lake. It's actually the Steve Monaghetti running track. That's the start right there, near the lake. And the imagery looks a lot neater and a lot more detailed than it was before. Oh, by the way, it's the double up and down on the screen where you can actually bend the maps and get the lay of the land that way. As I was saying about seeing where the forest is and where the open plains are, it's a good example to run straight through here. So if I was planning out my gravel rides, you can see a lot of forest through there, but also a lot of open areas through here and a little further north out in the, uh, the sheep paddocks. So all in all, a pretty neat little update there from Strava with the Mapbox satellite imagery. Okay, and finally today, uh, now this one was buried down in the iOS update changelog. This week we've made improvements to how we access the file system, which should save more of your phone battery while recording activities. 
Any savings that can be made for the battery life is a good thing and a welcome thing. And also make sure your screen brightness is down or totally off if you don't need to look at your Strava while you're out there recording activities. Okay, that's it for today. More fun with Strava. Hopefully you've learned something out of that. And you know the deal here on YouTube, it's the thumbs this way and subscribe to support this channel. It's much appreciated. Thanks for watching.